एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम In first part of the previous video, we have already seen how molecular orbitals can be represented with the help of energy diagrams, and how these energy diagrams are made. In case, uh, just you want to have a recap, we learnt in the previous video that energy level diagrams are very handy and very easy to represent the formation of molecular orbitals and where electrons are going when molecule is being formed. so in order to do that we first write on one side atomic orbitals on other side we write atomic orbitals of another atom remember we just keep only valence cell electrons and then we look at the possibilities of molecular orbitals which are being formed at each point and we arrange them in the order of increasing energy so we have talked about the cases simple cases or simple examples in the previous part Welcome to Ashan Academy my name is Aditya and you're watching engineering chemistry videos if you want to learn more about this topic you can refer this book from Ashan publishing you can find link for ebook in the description box below now we will look at few more examples especially the non similar atoms that means heteroatomic molecules or heterotomic groups so if you remember in the last video we talked about two carbon atoms combining together ethane and ethene so when on one side you have one carbon on another side you have again carbon then the energy levels will be same so if this is axis is representing energy and this level is representing the energy level of atomic orbitals on other side where you have atom 2 you don't have same energy level can you just cross check here it is having energy level at this point but this atom is having energy level at this point so that is the minor change or minor difference between the homoatomic molecules and heteroatomic molecules when you draw it for heteroatomic molecules then you take care of the energy levels of the same type of shell in different atoms so what it means what it represents that the nitrogen atom nitrogen atom will also have p valence orbital and carbon atom also has p valence orbital but the energy of p cell p subshell or p orbital of carbon is slightly higher than that of nitrogen however when carbon and nitrogen will combine these two p orbitals will definitely give rise to the formation of pi bonding and pi anti bonding so of course this is not a complete diagram this is only one part of it you can have the complete representation written like this you can add the 1s which is not participating in bonding then you can have 2s which will have two electrons in nitrogen and two electrons in carbon and these two electrons will combine together to form one bonding and one anti bonding so when we look at the cyanide structure we will find that there is one sigma bond between c and n this is represented by sigma bmo so you can say that two electrons or i'll i'll just say 2s2 electrons from each side 2s2 electrons of carbon and 2s2 electrons of nitrogen are present in this bond and these electrons are present in the form of bmo and abmo which is sigma bmo and sigma abmo now apart from that there are also two more bonds in the cyanide and these two bonds are being created because of the two molecular orbitals which are formed from combination of each of them so you can see 2px1 2px1 here 2px1 here 2px1 here so each of these four orbitals will give rise to a total four orbitals two pi bonding orbitals and two pi anti bonding orbitals 
So this is how cyanide structure, the molecular orbital of cyanide is represented here. And in overall, it will create, it will have this kind of shape or this kind of structure. So you can say there will be one sigma BMO, there will be one sigma ABMO, which will be representing the first interaction or first bond. Then there will be pi BMO and pi ABMO, which will be two. So if you can imagine this in light of Schrodinger's equation, that will be pretty much complex structure of clouds or complex representation of molecular orbitals. So this is how we represent the complex structures of, of molecules. Now further, more complexity comes when uh, you represent it for heavy atoms. Hope you remember in the first video, I told you about the differences in the energy levels of pi and sigma. For the smaller atoms, like uh, that of the first group or second group, except oxygen and fluorine, you have the pi orbitals, which have lower energy, whereas in case of higher atoms, the sigma has got lower energy. So carbon atoms, they will first prefer to make pi orbitals, pi bonding and pi antibonding. But if you look at oxygen or if you look at fluorine, they will prefer to make sigma first because sigma has lower energy in them. So that difference, I mean, you can represent it like this, pi, pi, then sigma, then pi star, and then sigma, this is for small atoms and for larger atoms you have that difference as pi uh, as sigma then you have pi then you have pi star that is abmo and then you have sigma star so this is for large atoms and also for oxygen and fluorine. So this particular caution has to be taken or care has to be taken when you are making energy level diagrams for different atoms. And you also have to take care of whether a molecule is homoatomic or heteroatomic and accordingly you can shift the position of energy levels. So now let's have a look at little more complex kind of system when you have multiple atoms together and they have a kind of movable or they can have the larger number of possibilities of bond formation. For example, ozone or one good example from organic chemistry is butadiene. So what you see in this butadiene molecule as you can check out the structure here CH2 double bond C and single bond C then double bond CH2. So this is basically um, a molecule which will have a double bond system which is alternating with a single bond. Such systems are called as conjugated systems. And you will find such conjugated systems in many more molecules like carrot that you eat that has got a molecule called carotene. It has got 11 such double bond, single bond alternating from each other. So what conjugated system has an implication on molecular orbital is that you cannot just look at one possibility. There can be many more type of frameworks which can be designed for its molecular orbitals. So basically uh, a carbon here will be sp2 hybridized. That means there will be three sp2 hybrid orbitals. Each one of them is representing sp2 hybrid, but there will also be one unhybridized orbital over here. So it can either have, let us say, sigma bond formation across each of them. That means the sigma, 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 sigma orbital of each of them is oriented in this fashion, in, in, in a fashion which is having the same wave function. So it can create a large electronic cloud or a large molecular orbital without any nodes. So one complete electronic cloud over the upper part and one electronic cloud over the lower part, that can be one possible framework. But there can also be a framework of pi electrons, which can switch. That means if you look at the sideways overlap, then there can be ABMO, 
this is not in the same phase this is an opposite phase so there can be a plus minus plus minus and therefore it can be anti bonding anti bonding system so there will be multiple nodes when you will look at the molecular orbital so it will be somewhere like this there will be multiple nodes present over here that will be another kind of configuration at the same time there is also a likelihood that this electron might switch flip from here to here which we called as uh, call as resonance so in this case also there will be change in the atomic orbitals orientation so what i wanted to explain here is that in certain molecules where there are multiple bonding centers the probabilities or molecular orbitals are not alike all the times but they are combinations of many different possibilities the same is true with a benzene structure if you look at the benzene structure again you will find the similar kind of situation that there will be lot of orbitals which will be available for interaction and they can give rise to many different frameworks because double bonds which are representing the the orbitals which are uh, parallelly oriented they keep on switching they keep on moving like this and therefore you can say that such kind of orientation where molecular orbitals are moving where the electrons are moving molecular orbitals are changing you can have multiple and more complex type of um, molecular orbital diagrams and molecular orbitals there can be more than one possibilities so that was all in this video we learned about what a molecular orbital energy diagram is and we also talked about the complex systems such as benzene and butadiene there can be many more examples like this which you can try at your own if you know the hybridization state if you know the resonance state you can create the energy diagrams and energy level diagrams as well for molecular orbitals if you want to learn more about this topic you can refer this book from s chan publishing you can find link for ebook in the description box below you can like share and subscribe the channel for continuous use and regular updates All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.